This is Slutina Wikström from QFT and Serian, and you're listening to Bob's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bob's Mayhem Hour, your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys awesome interviews. Today, it is an honor and privilege to have Miss Lene Vickstrom. She's the lead vocalist of QFT. Their debut album, Live in Space, is out now via This Spots Records. I'm going to be talking to them about now. It's Live in Space, correct? Yes, absolutely correct. Uh, okay, just make sure. See, something always happens when I do these interviews. But, uh, <laughs> all right, Linnea, let's talk about this new debut album from you guys. Some had said this album is a lot different from what you're used to doing in Therion. Is this something that you wanted to do different than, say, from Therion? Or, or what's your take on that? Like, it is different from Therion, but it's nothing that I, I set out. Like, I didn't... When I started writing the music, it wasn't like, oh, I need to be totally different from Therion or blah, blah, blah. Mm. It, I just tried to do whatever happened, you know, and mm. it turned out to be very different from Therion and, and that's okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to have a different flavor with different stuff that you do. Yeah. What's impressed you the most about making the debut album Live in Space? What, what's caught your eye about it, if anything? Good question. For me, it's just, it's sort of a the first time I can really be in control of of the whole creative process, mm-hmm. and that's been really cool to actually be be able to be the one who's like the boss. <laughs> and creatively, that's not a problem for me. But but to be the boss practically is very difficult for me. So mm-hmm. I'm still learning, but it's been a great learning experience doing this album in that regard as well as the creative part. How long did it take to record the album? I think we were in the studio five days, so it's quite quickly, but we recorded everything live, so, you know, you're, you have sort of a, a limited amount of time in the studio. If you want to record it live, you need to sort of nail it, and uh, yeah, I think we, we, we pulled it off in five days, including backing vocals. That's crazy, and I mean, and I mean, it really impresses me on how quickly some of these albums have been made. I mean, I've heard like you know, a month, eight months, and, and you guys, five days, that's that's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, that's pretty damn quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there any songs off this album that stand out more to you than any on it as of right now? I mean, I know these are like picking your favorite child or collectible, and I know these must change from day to day, but are there any that stand yeah. out for you? Yeah, and as you say, it, it, it does change from, from day to day. But the one that for some reason is, is always going to be extra close to my heart is End of the Universe, the opening track. Because it was one of the first one I wrote. And there's something that electric that happens when we play that song together with the band. So, so I, I must actually go with that. And that's purely based on the emotion that it evokes in me while playing and singing it. A lot of people like different styles of like movies things like that like you got horror movies you've got sci-fi movies you've got drama movies things like that but i mean you guys did this as to me like a sci-fi type album why (laughs) did you want to go that route is this something that you're interested in a lot or or what oh absolutely i mean my my idea from the beginning was to have all the songs be purely scientifically absolutely correct but then again that's very very difficult to pull off when you don't really have that, you know, a degree, a PhD in astrophysics or something. So I, it's more like a manifestation of how I've come to understand these topics and uh, like adding some philosophical thoughts in there and putting in a sci-fi adventure, like in aliens, we just go out and yeah, have an adventure in space sort of. So yeah, I'm, I, I love that stuff. And, and someone pointed out to me that it's, really great timing for that stuff with you know stranger things and the new it movie and and all of that stuff like it's very in style right now i guess with these themes which i didn't th- think about when when we started and recorded it but now in hindsight i'm i mean it's pretty much 
<laughs> right on the trend. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool too because the guitar playing the music in this when you listen to these songs is is pretty damn good. I mean, this actually is really good from you guys. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. And I, I'm not making fun or anything like that, but I kept thinking of Ancient Aliens, the show, when I kept listening to this. I was like, hmm, what would this do? Ah, is that the History Channel yes, show? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not angry with you. That sounds really cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everything that they say, it had to be by aliens. The Nintendos, that was aliens. Um, exactly. You know, wa- walkie-talkies, aliens. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <Cool>. Exactly. <laughs> Linnea, who produced this album for you guys? That's a difficult question because I mean I arranged everything and you know I guess produced it and then we had a guy who reco- a, a guy he's a legend who recorded the album and then we had a fantastic guitar player and friend Stefan Estelin who mixed it and then Thomas Plex Plex Thomas Plex Johansson he did the mastering. So it's like a team effort in in, in that uh, regard. But like arranging and producing, I guess that would have to be me. Now, when you guys were in the recording studio with a producer at the time, did, did you guys get pushed a lot or did they just let you go on your little way and then step in when they needed to? Or how did you work this out? I mean, our uh, sound engineer, Lennart, he basically pressed record and then we did our thing. <laughs> You know, and he he did a fantastic job with the microphones and setting up all of that. But he's really laid back and he can come with some, you know, pointers and be like, oh, maybe you should think about this a little bit. And, uh, you know, you're in, absolutely in dialogue with him, but he's, he's absolutely not a pusher, not at all. Do you guys do anything differently during the writing and recording process to help keep your mind fresh and open to, to new stuff, to not let the music get stale and not go down a path that you didn't want to go down before? Oh, well, that's a question for, for, the, for the future, I guess. I've just started to think about, you know, starting to write again for a potential second album, you know. And that's uh, since we just now, like when the album came out, all of us, we just found out how the sound actually is, like what is QFT. We had really no idea until everything was ready. Mm-hmm. But now we sort of know that. So now we have something to build on from, from our new knowledge, you know. But we, we didn't have that before, but now we do. So we'll see how, how, how we'll work from this because the, it's a, we, we have to think differently now when we don't have just a clean slate. We, we have something that people expect, and, but still you don't want to you know, listen too much to what people expect from you and mm-hmm. just do it from your heart as you uh, You understand. Right. Totally, it's this whole... <laughs> totally get it. Totally get it. Yeah, yeah. Don't change your way. Do it your own way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What can fans expect at a show from QFT who have not got to see you guys as of yet, if you've, if you've ever taken this out on the road so far? Uh, we have we actually only done one gig at the release party, but, but I was quite happy to see people's reactions to it because uh, like, I was thinking that they were going to be in a party and like, whoa, you know, singing along and blah, 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 and raising their fists and everything. But people were standing with their mouths open, like, oh my God, this is amazing you know it was <laughs> quite cool actually to see that kind of reaction and afterwards people were like i don't even know how what to say this was amazing so you're gonna see some fine musicianship and a lot of energy and a lot of communication with the audience and 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 a lot of communication in, in the band as well so i think it's, it's gonna be a cool show once we get it out on the road more for real and not only in a release party now, we're living in the digital era right now of recording albums and plus social media. Do you like this right now of the digital era to get you know music out quicker? Plus, if you have to work on music, you can share it back and forth with your bandmates. And plus, just you know, social media to get your music out quicker. Do you like this right now that we're in? Oh, good question. It's a love-hate relationship for me. <laughs> It's really good in the sense, like the things that you're pointing out, that it's quick to, to get your music out and, and uh, it's easier to, to connect with the fans and everything. But on the other hand, there's such a, a lot of background noise in the social media. So it's really hard to get out either way. Like if, if you had a band in the 70s or 80s and you actually got a record deal, then it was so much easier to actually 
be seen in a way because the noise wasn't it wasn't it wasn't as loud in you know how many bands wanted to get out there and True. you know so it's of course really good because it's become more democratic in a way that you can sort of just release your music uh, and also not having a, a record label necessarily you can re- release your music very easily online so that is really good i think for non-established band also to be able to just put themselves out there yeah. it's really good but yeah. it's also harder to to you know break through the noise yeah you're right there's a lot of and i don't mean i'm not bashing nobody i'm not doing anything like that but this is like linnea said she hit the nail on the head it's oversaturated with stuff out there right now and you have to mm-hmm. actually dig through bands and i do this on a daily basis because of the show that i run you have to yeah. you know just pick and choose and you know, there's a lot of bands that I get. It's really good. But yeah. like you said, you, you you have to keep digging and find that diamond in the rough as you as as I hate to say that cliche, but that's that's oh, yeah. it, you know. But you're right, I totally agree with you a thousand percent. I I, I yeah. sat here the other night and I listened to a, a radio show and they were five to six bands that sounded like Alice in Chains, every single one of them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I love Alice in Chains. Don't get yeah, me yeah. wrong, but no, no. It, you know, find your own style. Go go outside your box. You know, yeah. it's cool. But that's really difficult. Like the, the the absolutely most difficult thing in the world is to go outside the box and to just listen to what you self yourself want to do. Right. You know. Right. I agree. It's really difficult. And if you're a person who loves Alice in Chains. And that's like your favorite band in the whole wide world. It's not weird that the music's going to come out and sound like that. But, you know, and f- follow your heart. For me, it's, it's that. If you want to do that sort of music, go for it. Mm-hmm. Like, because for me, it's the, the, the driving force of doing music is purely that, doing music, you know. Yeah. And maybe some people's driving force is making it big and, you know, blah, blah, blah. For me, that's a byproduct that would be awesome if I could end up being on Wembley Arena. Like that would be, or Wembley Stadium, that would be mind-blowingly awesome. But yeah. I'm just trying to make music for me right now and hoping that that in the future maybe those big things might happen. But if it doesn't, I still made my best with the music that I made, you know? I mean, I think it's cool what you guys are doing, you know, because the, like I said, don't be scared to go outside your box. Do what you like, you know, yeah. sci-fi stuff. Uh, shit, a lot of people like that stuff. Seriously, yeah. you guys, it, it's it's good. Don't don't get me wrong. It's good. Don't don't uh, don't back down from it. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh no, no, I won't. Absolutely not. <laughs> what mm-hmm. what does QFT bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now? I have no idea. <laughs> Do you know? It's you can't reinvent the wheel. It's rock and roll music. And it's rock and roll music with with people who love to play together and try to do it sincerely. You know. I don't know if that's uncommon or if it's for me. I don't find that so much anymore. I I, I don't see the sincerity, really, mm-hmm. that much in modern music. There is one band that I recently found, and now I actually have to because it's like a long ass name. But I heard their album, uh, and I was like, this is this is for real. This is fucking good. <laughs> oh, sorry for swearing. What's the name of it? I think they're called the Church of the Cosmic Skull. Actually, really, really great. And also you can feel like the sincerity in the music that they're doing, which is something I myself really like to listen to. I can love listening to quick metal shops or whatever, someone playing really fast or someone doing blah, blah, you know. But when it boils down to what I actually like, it's, it's the sincerity, the hearing feelings and someone telling a story. Support-wise, I know that this is a newly formed band. I know this is your guys' first debut album, but is there a, a country or a location that stands out more, even surprises you that you guys get support from, if, if you've noticed so far? I haven't really noticed so far, and it's not really a surprise. I haven't gotten any surprise uh, fans mm-hmm. from, like, I don't know, Sri Lanka or something. But <laughs> I've had a, I'm, I'm on tour now together with Therion, my other band, and uh, the response here for QFT has also been really good. We're in South America at the time, or in Latin America, sorry. I'm in Costa Rica. And there's been a lot of interest in, in this new band or project. So absolutely Latin America, but I guess also that's because Therian has a really big fan base in Latin America. Mm. So, yeah. 
what made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you, Linnea? What was that that said, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do? Yeah, well, I grew up in a musical family. And it's been a, a natural part of my life since I was a baby. Like, it's been like eating, you know. So there's never really been any question uh, as to what I want to do. And then you've always gone around and be like, maybe I need to have a backup plan. And then, you know, fuck the backup plan and just do whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm privileged and I have the possibility to actually do what I want to do. Yeah. Not everybody has that, you know. So why not just go for it? But it's never been the question of what I want to do. Folks, QFT's debut album, Live in Space, is out now via Dispots Records. Get out and pick this album up. Trust me, I dig it. And uh, don't take my word for it. Just go out and, and give it a try. It's pretty damn cool for what they've done. So, Linnea, how can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy some merchandise, buy this actual album, and tour dates when you do take this on tour? How can they do that? I would suggest going to, to Facebook and follow us on our Facebook page. I think you will, if you type QFT band, you would probably get to, to the Facebook page. And you have a picture of me like in a, in a in cat suit with crystals on it. So you're going to want to press that button anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for the show? Absolutely. Let's do it. This is Slidia Wikström from QFT and Serian, and you're listening to Bob's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Thank you so, so much, Linnea. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. You too. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Goodbye.